of these last days, it's been labored, the question, where are we? What is this place where heaven and earth meet? And another question has arisen out of that question. And that is, what does it mean to fall on our sword? And now there are three stories that ask another three questions, remembering that stories are chemistry. The first is that story about the prince who was being trained as the coming monarch when his father passed. So he was educated in all the ways of state, diplomacy, the arts, and all of those things which constitute the work in a court. But what the prince had realized was that to run a kingdom, it was like being on a battlefield. There was always elements to be fought, famine, the problems with the people, etc., etc. But then also the prince learned that it was possible to learn the art of the five weapons. So having learned the ways of the court, he sought out a great master, a master of uh, the weapons, you might say. So he spent some long while with the master who taught him the way of the short arms, the way with the <coughs> dagger, uh, short, showed him how to work with the sword and bow and arrow and the mace. But then the master said to him, it is now time for you to leave. And the prince said, but you've only taught me uh, the four weapons, what is the fifth? And the master very sagely said, oh, the fifth weapon will arrive. And so the prince set out to return to his kingdom. But to do so, he had to pass through a dense forest. And he was told that anyone who entered that forest did not come out the other side. They disappeared. But the prince said, this is my only route back to my kingdom. I have no other choice, but I have my weapons. And so he entered the forest. And he hadn't advanced very far before he felt this dark force coming towards him. And as it neared, it grew darker and darker and darker. And so, of course, readying himself, he took out his bows and arrows, and he shot it at this ap apparition. But as soon as the arrows landed, it was like they dangled on the outside of that force, like decorations on a Christmas tree. So he tried with his mace, swinging it around his head. And suddenly the mace got stuck on the force. And so he had only recourse to move closer with his sword. But then his sword got stuck. And so all he had left was his dagger. So he went forth with his dagger, and the dagger got stuck on the force also. All that he had left was himself. So he threw himself at the darkness. He threw himself at the force, and he found himself stuck like that Christmas decoration. So he flailed around and flailed around, trying to release himself. And suddenly, something happened. 
and all his flailing and all his struggles ceased without a thought. No thought had arisen. It just ceased. And the great force roared at him. Why are you no longer fighting? So the first question is, what did the prince say to the darkness, the force that was there? Then there's a story about uh, Gampopa. Now Gampopa was a great physician and a great monk doing good works all over the world until he came into the presence of the great saint, Milarepa. Now when he came into Milarepa's presence, Milarepa knew immediately that Gampopa was to be his successor. So when he came, Milarepa immediately zeroed in like going for the jugular and he said to Gampopa, give up all your disciplines Stop all of that stuff that you don't drink alcohol or eat meat and give it all up and go to the mountain and meditate, meditate, meditate. So, of course, Gampopa was shattered. Immediately all of those things had fallen away from him. So he went up into a cave and he meditated for ten years. Then he came down to check with Milarepa what his status was. And he said, to Milarepa, well, I've been meditating for 10 years and blah, 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 blah. Meditate? Said Milarepa, meditate? Did I tell you to meditate? Oh, I was completely wrong. Oh, give it all up. Stop it. Give it up now. And so, again, Grandpapa shattered, went up back to his cave again and gave up meditation. And he was there for another 10 years until he finally came down to Milarepa. And immediately Milarepa gathered him up and congratulated him and said, well, now you can go. So there was nothing else <coughs> Gampopa could do but go back out into the world again. But just as he was leaving, Milarepa said, wait, 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 I have my final secret to show you. And with that, Milarepa turned round and lifted up his simple shift to bear to Gam Popa his gnarled and scarred backside from his years and years and years of meditation. So the second question is, what was Milarepa's secret? What was he revealing when he turned around and bared his scarred and gnarled backside? The third story is about Confucius. Now Confucius had retired from public service in the government and so one day one of his disciples, one of his followers, Wen Lai, came to his house but when he arrived there he found Confucius what appeared to be in a state of melancholy and depression. So he was very concerned. He'd never seen the master like this before. So he immediately went to the leading disciple of Confucius to tell him what he'd found when he went to Confucius's house. So immediately this disciple took his lute and began to play and sing. And so he went to Confucius's house 
and Confucius invited him in as this disciple was playing his lute and singing. And he was pleased to see that Confucius seemed to cheer up a little bit. But then Confucius asked him, Why are you so happy? The disciple said, But, Master, why are you so melancholy? Confucius said, You tell me why you're so happy first, then I'll tell you why. So the disciple said, Well, you always taught us that when we bowed to the will of heaven, that we would be happy. So I practice that. <coughs> I follow that. <coughs> so I am always happy. Happy? You call that happy? Said Confucius. Look at you. To be happy, to follow the will of heaven, is a state of mind. You have to work at it. You have to practice it. Don't you realize that in life there is suffering? We do have emotions. So what you're doing is practicing happiness as a state of mind. So now I'll tell you what happiness is. So the third question is, what is this state? What did Confucius say to his disciple? What do these stories tell us? How do they illuminate for us and confirm for us that indeed we are in that place where heaven and earth have met? What are the answers to these questions? that we can answer from our own experience now, because we're there. Can you now find anything, a filament, that separates what have been called heaven and earth, existence and non-existence, and permanency and impermanency? Can you? But if we need confirmation, we get confirmation by answering these questions. But not as cementation, not as a, an exercise of mind, but recognizing these stories as chemistry. So let them do their work. And if there is any intent, it's for us to recognize and claim. You know, we are in that place where heaven and earth, existence and non-existence, permanency and impermanency meet.